Welcome to Teton Valley Lodge in the heart of Yellowstone Teton Territory in Eastern Idaho. We are up for an unbelievable adventure exploring all the rivers that this lodge has access to. We're looking at brown trout, hybrids, and of course, the world famous cutthroat trout this region is known for. We're going up and down all over the place in search of giants. This is coming up next on The New Fly Fisher. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Yellowstone Teton Territory, Visit Idaho, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, Welcome to the Teton River in the heart of Yellowstone Teton Territory. The Teton River is a tributary of the legendary Henry's Fork of the Snake River. Spanning 64 miles, it winds its way through the Teton Valley and is the lifeblood for agriculture, recreation, and of course, incredible fly fishing. On the banks of the Teton River is Teton Valley Lodge, a fly fisher's dream destination. With access to multiple fisheries including the Henry's Fork, South Fork of the Snake, and the Teton River itself, Teton Valley Lodge has you covered for a lifetime of adventure on the water. In eastern Idaho, you can float, walk and wade, and even rappel into some of the finest trout fishing in the west. With expert guides to assist in every step of the way, Teton Valley Lodge has it dialed in for any angler looking for world-class fly fishing. Our guide across Yellowstone Teton territory on this adventure is Chris Scott, a veteran at Teton Valley Lodge. To my right is Chris Scott. To my left is the world-famous Teton River. Chris has been guiding here for more than 20 years. Chris, what's the plan for the day? Well, Mark, uh, this is a pretty special deal to what we're doing today. We're head hunting for big trout on flat water. Situation where we're gonna see them feed, sneak in there, lay a fly in there, watch them take it. It's pretty awesome stuff. If you've never head hunted in Idaho, you're really missing out. Let's go. And not only is this style of fishing special, the technique and the boat used to fish out of is entirely unique as well. Yeah, these boats are really special. They're from Michigan originally, and the guys that pioneered this stuff are the guys that originally started the lodge. And uh, we're just carrying on that tradition. It's a pretty special deal because we can get in there really sneaky and slick and quiet and get right on these big spooky fish without them knowing we're here. So am I making long casts? Yeah, we're making pretty long casts. Uh, the surface is really glassy and they can see us just as well as we can see them. That's why we fish sitting down. Um, basically, as you're looking down the river, sitting here, the point where you can no longer see under the surface well is about how far we're gonna need to cast to them. Okay. Right, because if you can see the bottom well, then they can see you coming at them. And we're fishing straight down to them. So we've got that bigger parachute dry fly on there that's gonna land on the surface really softly. So that means we can set it a lot closer to the fish without spooking them, if that makes sense. As we're casting on an individual fish, we'll lay it in there, trying to anticipate which way he's going. If the fly comes by him and he obviously didn't see it or refuse it or eat it, then you'll wanna strip it back up so it comes back up around him. For some reason that doesn't spook him. If you pull it off the water and just try and cast, that'll spook them. But if you strip it back up next to them along the film in the surface before you recast, so you get the flies on our back to our side of them, that usually doesn't spook them and you can just reset and make another presentation on them. Gotcha. Ooh, just leave it, stand by. Remember to let them eat it. Give them a second. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Take him. Yeah! Man, is that ever fun. 
Are you kidding me? Keep your rod tip up. Good job. He looked at it and then turned around and came back on it again. Two feet of water, man. Two feet of water. You're right, they do try to get down in the grass, don't they? Hey, you got him. Nice work. He took the emerger. Yeah, nice cut bow. Cool. Just lift him right up there. Got him. Oh, he's a pure cutthroat. Pure one. Nice. There we go. Ate my new emerger. Yeah, put him down on the water. Tell me when. And you're good. Now to you and talk. Good job, Mark. You did a great job. I see a lot of water moving around. There's fish moving all around in here. There you go. Good cast. Nice. Perfect. And let's let that go. I'm going to follow it down with the boat. I lost it. Oh, I got it. I got you. If you lose your fly, you can always lift it to just straighten it back out so it skates just a little. And then you can see where it is, you know? Nicely done. Nice work. Nice casting. Yep. Right in line. Great shot. This is going to be cool. Stand by. Take him. Yeah. Oh, oh, he came off. That was a good fish. Oh. <laughs> now we're still good. <laughs> you know what my problem was there? I didn't lift the rod tip. I didn't take the slack out. Good shot, though. You Sorry, man. You did everything else perfect. After that missed fish, Chris has some much needed advice for fishing drakes and an emerger. So as far as your casting stroke and getting the flies to turn over where we want them to, uh, think about your the last part of your forward cast as flicking paint off a paintbrush or water off your hand or something. That last little power stroke forward will generate a lot more line speed and it'll get the, the loop a lot tighter. And once you mess around with that for a few casts, you'll get it to where when you snap it down forward, it, it turns over and then sits right down. We wanna try and avoid an open loop where the flies hang out up in the air for a while, then the breeze can carry them off track, you know? Casting looks good though, otherwise. Cool, yeah, let that ride. Looks good, good and straight, looks good. Giant trout, man, that's a big one. Which way are you going there, buddy? Where are you going? Hips coming at you. Stand by, here we go. Take him. Oh. oh! Yeah, let it go again. Oh, I don't know what happened. He 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 went for the dropper. He went for the merger. Oh. You see these little clear spots on the bottom where you can see clear gravel. Those are some of the only spots through here that fish can sit in one spot and feed. So when I can find one that's in a spot like that, I can pretty much guarantee that when our flies get there, he's still gonna be there, you know, which helps us out a lot. Otherwise, they're moving around a lot and you really gotta get a cast that's close to them in order to get them to eat. Otherwise, your fly will just go through there and, and they just happen to be off to one side or the other eating something else. It's nothing you're doing wrong, it's just a rhythm thing. So this is a really interesting fishery here, whereby each of these fish has his own attitude and his own personality. And so as we go from one feeder to the next hunt, hunting them, we get to watch each individual and decide what they're doing, how they're working, if they're happy or sad or agitated or otherwise, and then make adjustments accordingly. It's pretty fun. Every, every minute's different, every fish is different. It changes hourly and we get to change with it. It's pretty fun stuff. In a little further, I think. Good fly. Got him, got him. Ate the emerger. Yeah. That's the benefit, man, of, of fishing these cutthroat with the double fly rig. Awesome. Is, uh, you know, you got two shades. You're covering the water column. Even though that our dropper is only three inches below the dry, they come up and eat it. And uh, it's super fun. In this clear water, you can watch them feed. It's ideal. That was a great take. Way to let him eat it. Yeah, you do have to pause.
That's bigger than I thought it was, Chris. Nice one. Okay, here we go. Nice fish. But we did a great job on waiting and letting them meet at that time. Got a good cast downriver to him. Got to watch him come to get it. Awesome, great job. Here you go, buddy. Cool, great. Next. <laughs> That's a good fish. That's a happy fish. Yeah. Nice, nice. Ooh, might have been a hair close to him that time. Let's just let it go and see. See how his his mannerism, the body language changed right as the flies landed. Yeah. He moved a lot more water. Take him. Yeah. Strip, strip, strip. Yeah. That's a big fish, man. We watched this fish from yards up. Beauty. Feeding and getting happy. That's a beauty. And I thought I screwed up the cast by putting the fly too close to this. Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous cutthroat. Look at that thing. Trophy cutthroat on the Teton River. Look at that. That's oh, a big yeah. fish, man. Here we go. Big wild cutthroat. Great job, Mark. Well, you made some improvements to your cast and got the flies turned over perfectly. I'll tell you, well, we, we laid it in a little too close to him there at first, and he spooked for a second. I thought he wasn't going to come and grab it, but you did a good job to leave it there and let him come and take it. Great job. And that was just day one. Teton Valley Lodge is a full-service lodge located just outside of Driggs, Idaho. The lodge doesn't leave any amenity left behind. Delicious meals, private cabins, full dining room, and fly shop ensure you're all set and ready for your fly fishing adventure. Chris, I absolutely love the Teton River. Um, it fished so well yesterday, but today we're doing a different program, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, today I got a different idea. Today we're gonna start here and finish over on the South Fork. So we'll get to fish some of these features down here as the hatches build and let it get better over on the other side. So by the time we get there, it should be phenomenal. I'm excited about this. So one of the things I love about fishing in the Yellowstone Teton territory is the variety of fisheries that you can do and you know, a short drive, short shuttle, yeah. and you can get into it big time. Why not? <laughs> but before we get started, Chris explains his philosophy on the basics of mending. I'd like to talk a little bit about mending. I get a lot of questions about this. I, I guide seven days a week, and so I get to do a lot of training with people. Thought I'd share a couple points with you. Um, first of all, uh, the, first, the first mend in a drift is the most important one in my opinion. The longer the line sets on the surface, the more the surface tension holds the fly line and makes it hard to get it up off the water. And half or more than half of the mend, in my opinion, is lifting the line up getting the line up off the water. So when you see me and my friends fishing through on a day off, if we had one, it would look something like this. So I'd make a cast. First mend would be up high and over to the side, getting the line up off the water. After that initial mend, my secondary and third mends are gonna look more like this, a simple lift and set. Now I have extra slack. I can either strip that up or leave it to let my flies drift a little further. Again, cast, Big mend, as the, as the line comes down and begins to belly out, I'm gonna lift it and set it. I'm gonna leave that slack to let it keep drifting, and as it bellies out again, I'm just gonna do it again. Up and down. Really subtle eat. Totally, gosh. He must have just sipped that little dropper down there, huh? Sipped it. Yeah, if that was on the surface, it'd have been a sip. Come here, little sipper. A little cutty. Sir sips a lot. Let me get my hand wet. We care about our wild fish here. And try and be gentle to them. Easy. So we've really, we've really been working on the puzzle today. And, you know, we floated about a mile. We've caught a ton of little fish. Uh, but you switch to something big with a dropper underneath, and, and that's the first 
you know, good fish of the day. Yeah. Mm. There you go. They're super tight to the bank. You'd They're... think they'd be out in this faster stuff, but I guess because the sun's so high, you know, they need that protection. Yeah. And with that last fish, you know, we saw that bird attack. Makes sense, right? Yep. Another little cutty. This guy's not, doesn't have any wounds on him, though. No. Thanks, bud. Move over here. Take him. Yeah. That nice. was good. That was good. I Persistence feel... pays off, right? Yep. Persistence. It's a patience game. Never give up. Never give up. Just change flies again. Doesn't yep. work. Change flies again. It's, Doesn't work. Change flies. That's Eventually. the deal. But the cool thing is, Chris, is I said to you this morning that you're one of the more confident guides that I that I've fished with. And it shows right there. I mean, you know that there's fish here. Yep. And you know that they're gonna eat. It's just figuring out what the puzzle is. And yeah, it may take some time. Uh, but you know what? Once you get it, there you it go. lights out. And this is well worth every, every single cast. Nice one. It's a beautiful fish too. Come on up here, bud. Nice, good stuff, thank you. Nice little hybrid. Nice fish. There we go. So patience does pay off. Persistence pays, friends. Nice fish. Great take, too. Yeah, awesome take. Way to wait and let him eat it. Thank you. Well, I saw that guy coming for a few seconds and I was afraid to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. That was a good one. Oh yeah. That was cool. That's the fun part about fishing cutthroat on these small streams is it's target practice. You know, this little guy, oh, this rainbow. A little hybrid, yeah. Hybrid, yep. This little guy flashed up here in the shallow. One quick cast to him, boom, eight. Boat ramp fish, gotta love it. Come on back here, buddy. So this will be the last fish on the Teton River, and then we're gonna head up and fish the South Fork of the Snake. Yeah. This will be great for the evening. Come here, buddy. Nice little hybrid. Ate the dry, took it hard. That was fun to watch, man. That was a great job. Yeah, if you wanna come out here and do some target practice on fish like this, you know, in these quarters, in these intimate settings like this, I would suggest doing a little practice at home before you come out. Um, well, something, something I tell my guys to do for practice when they're back home for the winter is a drill where you set up two different cans or hula hoops or whatever you got in the, in the backyard. Take your five or six weight with no fly on it, just the leader. And then do one object that's shorter at a comfortable distance for you. And then a second object that's off to the side and back a little further, at like outside of your comfort range. And then practice casting to the first thing and then picking up and without touching the grass again, let line out to your, to your far enough away to set it on the farther target and then pick it up and without letting it touch the ground, shorten back up and come back to the shorter target and go back and forth like that. And I guarantee the next time you come fishing with your guide, you'll step in the boat and you will impress him. 100%, <laughs> try that. <laughs> Oh, that's a big fish, man. I called that one. You that was, did call it. That was cool. That is a good one. And typical cutthroat eat, slow, come up. But it's funny, hanging in the shade, right? Yeah. Big, bright, bluebird, sunny day. This guy doesn't even know he's hooked yet. There he goes. All right, nice one. You work hard for it, it pays dividends. How do you like that? Nice fish. Good one. 17, 18 incher. Yeah, sweet, sweet. Any fish you can get on a hopper is amazing. I'll let this guy go. 
Wow, what a fish. What an experience. Hoppers in Yellowstone Teton territory, it does not get any better than that. You put your work in and you get paid. Versatility is a virtue with Chris Scott and he's not happy with the way the river's fishing today. So we decide to make a move and head up to the South Fork of the Snake just below Palisades Dam in search of big fish. We're right below the dam on the South Fork of the Snake River and this is a big fish section of the snake. Now, the reason why it's such a big fish section is because, well, this is where they live. And the reason why we know that this is where they live is because Chris is telling me that as things pass through the turbines of the dam, whether they be scuds or shrimp or little bait fish, they get chewed up. All those fish hang out in this section because they're picking off all the stuff. So we're fishing with giant flies as our, as our dry fly and then nymphs and uh, mayfly um, nymphs underneath. So uh, we're hunting for a big brown, big cutthroat and big hybrids. Yep, get him, get him. Get on him. I got him. Careful with him until you see him. He might take off, he might be a real big one. Check and look down at your line. Put a little less pressure on him, a little, little bit less pressure. There you go. I'm gonna pull in here to the bank. He should, he should work himself back up the bank. Pull him hard to the right, hard into the bank. There you go. Still haven't seen this thing yet. Okay, it's I'm a good anchor. fish, man. I'm gonna anchor right here, buddy. I'm gonna anchor right here. Oh, he took that, he took the nymph on the, uh, on the mend. I guess it was brown. He hasn't jumped either, that's the other thing. No, it's a rainbow. Nice rainbow. Good one. Nice, good job, nice stab. Nice work. Pretty stuff, man. Look at the size of that Boy, rainbow. What a great last fish. Last thing in the day, last, last few hours of the day. Sun's getting a little lower. Huh? You got to like that. You got to work at that. You got to work. Put in some work. Good fish. Yeah, put in a little work. You never know what'll happen. Might just be a big, beautiful cutbow like that. Fishing in Yellowstone Teton territory, you're allowed to fish with three flies. Today, we've got a terrestrial and two nymph droppers. Um, now, there's a trick to fishing three flies that you have to be careful of because you will get tangled. Uh, you need to open your loop. So in order to open your loop, you need to come over top of, it's almost like a lob. You need to lob those flies over so that your loop isn't squishy, isn't tight, and you're not gonna tangle on yourself. It's gonna save you a lot of time to catch more fish. Yeah, so looking down, you see the shelf showing up here in the middle. So we're gonna fish it off the right of us. I'll start slowing us down. We'll just set up a drift over there to the right of us. Yeah, somewhere out in there. Take him! Nice. Ew, just like that! Nice! To the dry, that's right! That's fantastic. That is absolutely amazing. That's good hope, fish too, man. I hope we got all that. Yep, so now once he's in the net, okay, you can hold on to him. I got him. So what we're doing is we're actually gonna move over so we don't blow over all this water. Um, and then we're gonna let this fish go and we're able to keep fishing. That fly just popped right out. That's awesome. Good. That's actually right here is pretty fish. damn good. All right, so we pulled over to the side so we can look at this fish safely. And to, get, and to get a fish of this quality on a surface fly, unbeatable, unbeatable. Yeah, Just yeah. perfect. I'll tell you, the greatest thing about what we have out here is we have inc incredible water and a variety of water. You can fish, you can come and fish here for the next 20 years and not fish everything we have to offer. And uh, if you come out and fish with us, we want you to catch fish. I tell you, our guides, Chris, like Chris, you fish with Chris, he wants you to catch fish more than you want to catch fish. I can almost guarantee it. And that's how the guides look at it. If you come out, you'll be part of our family. You're gonna fish amazing water every day, a different place every day, and you're gonna have a lot of fun. 
The next day, we decide to hit the South Fork of the Snake River and float a double section totaling about 14 miles of river. The South Fork of the Snake is a wonderfully diverse river with many opportunities to explore the main river and the ever-changing braids as side channels. With water levels regulated by upstream dams, the river is constantly changing and never fishes the same. So we're down here on the South Fork of the Snake on the lower end. Uh, there's mutant stoneflies hatching right now in the, in the, in the, at night and early in the morning. So fish are used to seeing that. So there's a really deep drop off over here that I wanna, I wanna sink something down into. So I'm gonna do something right now that you might not have seen or, or be aware of. I'm gonna take a dry fly, an old generic hazel, like a sofa pillow, and I'm gonna sink it behind a generic rubber leg. So to do that, I'm gonna tie this rubber leg on here to some 3X or even 2X, because they're pretty feisty right now. You can get away with it. They're not leader shy. And then another piece of 2X to this dry fly. But first, I'm gonna chop this dry fly down to barely anything. That's gonna help it sink. It's gonna look more like a struggling swamped adult. Um, also, these flies don't have a wing on them anyway. They're mutants. So I'm gonna cut this just about all the way off, uh, trim the hackles way down and uh, put it on behind this, this rubber leg. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take most of this wing all the way off. Uh, the way I like to do that to keep it looking really buggy is I try and leave a couple little hairs on each side and cut out this whole center. So I'm gonna take my hemostats that have a cutting edge on them right here, and I'm gonna take it right down the middle of the dry fly. I'm gonna chop most of that wing off just like this. And I'm gonna take the bottom hackle off and try and separate it a little. So now it's got some legs on the sides, no hackle down the bottom at all, and very little down the top. And so as you see, I've left, I've left a couple little strands of hair coming off the sides. That just makes it look really buggy to me. So I've tied this big rubber leg nymph on, 2X, pretty heavy stuff. And above the junction knot with the leader on the tape, off the tapered section, I have a split shot right here. This is a pretty, pretty good size split shot, heavy lead. So I'm off the back of the nymph, I've got another piece of 2X material here. So now I'm gonna tie this dry fly on behind this nymph. And I want it to flutter around a lot in the current. So I'm gonna do a loop knot to this. And with this knot, you know the knot's tied right when the tag comes off the main line at like 45 degrees or so like that. So I know that, that that's a good knot, strong, it's real strong, and that's 2X fluorocarbon. So we'll be able to slap this thing around, bounce it off the rocks and trees and whatever we got to do, and it should stay put. So now we're going to be able to fish these flies in deep, fast water. Fish are hung up right below the drop-offs in here in this kind of situation where they don't have to work too hard to get food. The food comes by them fast and they can just roll up and grab what they want as it goes by. So we need to get it down to them. So with this rig right here, the lead and these two flies, we're going to be able to do that. I'm fishing a drop-off here from a, from a rocky flat. And it's important when you approach the drop not to just go charging in and go right to start fishing the, the obvious structure. You want to work your way out. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing these nymphs out on a tight line and working my way to the drop because just like steelhead fishing, these fish could literally be at your feet. So you don't want to overpass water that could hold fish, work your way out, eliminate the water that's in front of you as you get to the drop. There he is. There Just he is, like big that. brownie, big brown. Big one. Let him run, buddy. boy. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, that is a huge oh brown God. trout. <laughs> so cover water. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say. And he's still in charge. Large and in charge. Just keep walking down the shelf. Got him. Got him. Sweet. What a fish, man. Nice fish. What a fish, what a technique. What do you eat, the drown or the, uh, pe uh, the rubber legs? The rubber legs. 
How do you like that? There you go. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. What a fish. What a fisher. Big old fins, fins yeah. on them, huh? Pretty, got a little adipose coming. Yeah, yeah. Got teeth on them, too. Yeah, he does. Big mouth brownie. Yes, what sir. What a beauty. Thank you, sir. Good what job. What a great technique. Right on. Tons of fun. When you approach a situation like this, usually the most aggressive, biggest fish is gonna be the first one to charge the fly and eat it. So it's really important that your first cast or two is on point and your mens are good and your tension's right so you can hook them. So you can't be too casual about the first two casts. It's really important. Focus, get a good drift, watch your indicator. Because like you saw, that was his first cast in, that, in this spot and I'm really happy that he was ready to go. Great job. Let's do that again. There you go, good cast. Yeah. There he is, there he is, we Ooh, got him. that's a big we one. We got him, strip, strip, strip. Let him run, man, let him run. <laughs> wow, Has what a fish. Hashtag I love my office. <laughs> great job, man, great job. That was awesome. I'm gonna go grab the net. Yeah, great. Woo. So these fish are just sitting right off this ledge. And uh, man, oh man. Anybody ever tells me that indicator fishing's dull? I got something to tell you, it's not. Not at all. I'm curious to see what he ate. Oh, he ate the drowned terrestrial. Nice. He ate that sunk and dry for me. Yeah. That's a good fish right there. I'm happy with that one. I'm gonna surf him over to you. Boy, did you see him jump right after you hooked him? He yeah. tore all over this place. He did. Oh, that was great. King of the pool. Nice grab. Good job, Chris. Great job, you. Pretty work, man. You're doing everything I asked you. Sweet. And it's paying <laughs> dividends. So the orange on this brown trout is absolutely remarkable. Look how orange that is. Pink hues, big old adipose fin. Fantastic, fantastic fish. We're down on the South Fork today. It's getting into autumn. And we have a, a rare treat today. Uh, on the rock right here in front of me are little nymphal shucks of a certain kind of stonefly that hatches only at this time of year down here. You can see there's a big gravel bar behind me. There's a lot of big gravel bars out here on this stretch. As the water drops and exposes these rocks, these stoneflies hatch. These are a special uh, smaller golden stonefly. They're actually kind of gray in color and they're what we call a mutant. They, they don't have wings. So that makes for great dry fly fishing out here because since they can't fly, they just skitter across the surface and drive trout absolutely nuts. So we're gonna have the opportunity today to tuck a big rubber-legged dry fly into these fast banks and these flats and all over and twitch it and skitter it around a lot and get these fish up to eat it. We just came through the first little stretch of bank from the put-in. We've gone a few hundred yards and we've had like a dozen fish take the dry fly already. So, uh, this is only gonna get better. Come on, let's roll. There you go, that's it. So they'll come at it on the twitch, then it stops and they catch it. All right, they see it skitter, they come, start coming, you stop it, they eat it. But in this situation, just fish it. Right, right there, maybe, yeah, little twitches maybe. <clears throat> but try and give it a little drift in between the skitters, you know, that's because that's when they're gonna catch it and eat it. Gotcha. They'll, they'll swat at it while it's moving, but they'll probably miss it. Let's go in there a little closer and just do the same thing. Just go in deep, skitter it out. Good. I mean, you're, you're waiting long enough, I feel like, before you go. You're doing it hard. There you go, That's a nice, nice one. Cutty. Nice cutthroat. There you go. I think you're doing it right, Mark. I'd say you're doing it just fine. I'm gonna slide in here and anchor up. A little slow eat. First cutthroat of the day. Classic cutty eat, yeah. real slow. See this grass right here, came right off this grass. Yeah, he was living right. in there. He was tucked right in here. Just like on the Teton flat water. We've got a double, double dry on here because these fish are totally zoned in on these, on these uh, mutant stones. God, they just don't quit. Just amazing. Such a fun, fun fishery when you can take fish regularly 
on a day like today on dries, it doesn't get any better than this. It really, see, good trick, huh? Yeah. Good job. Nice cut, he ate the Nice fish. What a fantastic oh, animal. Dandy. Feel his head shakes. I mean, yeah. I got him in the lips. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bump down. I'm gonna stay moving right. I'm gonna stay along this bank. I don't want to get this this log right here in our way, so I'm not gonna put us over the lumber yard. When you come down, he looks like the bottom's all clear right here. Man, that is a giant brown trout. Okay, I'm gonna back up an anchor, and I'm gonna jump out and run down there. It's like he just rolled up in it just then. That's a big rainbow. It is, big cut bow. Nice. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. nice. Oh. Right, get out and take a look at this guy. Hey, look at this one. Oh. This is a big fish, man. Look at that thing. That is a special fish. That is a specimen is what that is. So this is a hybrid cut bow. You can tell that by a couple things. Uh, first of all, they have a, they'll often have a little blotch on their belly, like this big girl's got a little yellow dot right here. The other way you can tell is if, if you push on their tongue a little, they'll have a little red, hot orange in there. You see that? Yeah. All right, man, let's let her go. What a fish. What a fish, huh? Thrill. Look at that thing. All right, here you go, girl. There we go. Okay. Oh, all right. I'm gonna push you there. Ooh, there he is. Good fish, wow. Ooh, that's a big cutthroat. Oh, man. Ooh, ooh wee. Look at that thing. We're gonna fight him through some pretty heavy water here. That's all right. Woo, what a fish. What an eat. Oh, my God, that was awesome. That was sick. I'm gonna try and, we'll fight him down to the backwater here, and they'll pull in there and try and get him. Just keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna push towards him a little. So, so tight to the bank these fish are. I mean, we're talking a game of inches here, yep. right? You gotta put it within an inch or two of the bank and skate it out, and they just come up and whack it. What a dandy. Let's see where it can Right in the corner. Oh man, what a great fish. What a fish, what an eat. That was awesome. Man, that was cool in that fast bank. That was awesome. Get out of there. You got him. There you go. Yep. You lift him, lift him. Got him. Nice work. Good job. Woo! Awesome. Look oh, at wow. that. Look at this guy. All right, here we go. Look. <laughs> at that. <laughs> what a fish. And on that fast bank, watch them eat that dry fly. That was just so cool. Here we go, flies here we out. Go. Awesome. What a pretty fish. All right, let's let him go. You've got to be kidding me. Are you actually kidding me right now? Don't move, don't move. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, oh. no way. No way. <laughs> oh, man. No Look way. Look at this guy. I'm just kind of sitting here watching him. I don't, I don't even want to touch him. I'm just checking him out. Like, look at this guy. Oh, my God. He hurts you. 
Yeah, it's fine. Good, I'm, good. I'm bleeding, it's a all little, good. A little blood's good. What an absolute stud brown trout. Look at that thing. I'm, I'm completely in awe. Um, what a fantastic fish, what a special moment. That Look at the size of its adipose fin. And he barely moved any water when he ate it. He just came up, slurp, fly was gone. Wow. Oh my God. The blue on its cheek. What a thrill. What an absolute thrill. Back to get even bigger, right? <laughs> Look at him. Wow, what a tank. Yeah. Oh. Equipment for this Yellowstone Teton Valley adventure is as follows. For hopper dropper rigs, we're using a nine foot, both five and six weight rod with matching five and six weight, weight forward floating lines. Leaders were nine foot three X taper leaders with four X tippet for droppers. The flies we were using were hopper patterns, Chernobyl ants, and of course, mutant stone flies. It's our final day fishing out of Teton Valley Lodge and we make the decision to go to work. A short drive from the lodge finds you at a very different stretch of the Teton River, where access is a little dicey. Those who know me know that I'm a sucker for adventure, and you want to talk about adventure? We're about to drop this raft thousands of feet down into this valley. We're going to fish the Teton River today, and it's going to be absolutely incredible. Are you actually kidding me right now? That was awesome. How about that, huh? Yeah, this is pretty special, man. We're down in the canyon of the Teton. Uh, barely gets touched. Yep. Uh, uh, I can see why. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little bit to get in here, but it uh, keeps the riffraff out. Right. So yeah, this is awesome. And we get this place to ourselves. Basically, we're not gonna see any other boats today. Uh, it's my favorite time to come here because the river's down a lot. And so the fish are in certain spots. They're not gonna be everywhere, mm -hmm. right? There's not enough water for them to move around too much. So they're gonna be in spots. We'll be able to locate them easily. They're gonna eat almost 100% dry flies today for us all day long. A lot of cutthroat takes, you know, where they come up real slow yeah. and sip it. So you gotta wait for them to eat it, buddy. I, will, I, will. I know you can. That's a stud. Nice fish. That's a big fish, That's man. That's a nice one. It's so rocky in here, you really got to fight him with a high rod tip. Try and keep him up. That's not a brown, is it? It's got to be a cutthroat. It's got to be a cutthroat. It ate like a brown. Sure did. It's a good cutthroat. Again, in the shallow water, right? Yeah, really, really aggressive in that shallow, too. That's Super cool. aggressive fish. What a bite. That was insane. A that great was take. so good. Good hybrid. Nice one, yeah. Nice. That's why you thought it was a brown right away, huh? Yeah, yeah, he just acted a little different, you know? A little harder fight. Yep. Really terrorizing the river. Wow. King of the river right there, huh? Right there, yeah. You had just said, too, we're gonna pull a big one out of here. Yeah, we're gonna find another nice one right, right in here somewhere. All right. There he is. Great fish. What a dandy, huh? Yeah. That's a big cutthroat. That is a big cutthroat. Good one, good one. Oh, good. come back here, buddy. I was trying to bring him in right here on this dead water. Yeah, let's go chase him down. You're gonna go down? Yeah, I'm chase. I'm gonna chase after him. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah, we'll just chase him to this white water. Take him for a spin. We'll just take this dog for a walk, and I'll pull over on the next bank right down here. We can take care of him. Yeah, just, just go nice and easy on him. Just let him stand in the water. Yeah, I'm just keeping looks, it tight. Looks like he wrapped up in your leader a little. That's why I put that piece of fluorocarbon buffer after the monofilament. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, just rod up. Yeah, we don't need to turn them into the bank. It's fine. I'll jump out and I'll throw the anchor out. That's the deal. You just gotta, you gotta be willing to stop, pull back up into spots and fish it hard. Fish all the little nooks and crannies. Let's take a look at this absolute stud hybrid. I am so pumped for this. Look at that guy. What a dandy. This fish. That's a champion. It's right absolutely there. giant for here, huh? What see, a fish. See those gashes underneath here? Yeah. But he's a rainbow, you know? But yeah. he's got some, some cutthroat characteristics. And this is a good one there. for this river? That's a good one, yeah. That's a really nice one. I want to thank everybody at Teton Valley Lodge. What an unbelievable experience. You really need to get here if you want to catch trophies. My name is Mark Melnick. I hope you've enjoyed this adventure here on the new Fly Fisher. Adventure is out there. Remember, all you have to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. From everybody at the new Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. And hopefully, we'll see you in the West. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Yellowstone Teton Territory, Visit Idaho, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,